Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about what I do on a daily basis as a developer. And I've, I've been, uh, we're kind of at a crossroads at my current project where we have finished uh, one module or one application and we're um, getting ready to move on to the next step, the, the next phase, if you will. And so I think it's a good time to reflect upon uh, kind of the whole life cycle as well as what I do on a daily basis. Um, Without going into too much detail about where I work and what I do and things like that, because uh, as with most most companies, they don't want you talking about your work in detail, um, specifically software, um, as well as well and probably more so. Um, but um, I work at a company that traditionally uh, helps run military training events, and uh, so they're a service company and. What I do is I develop uh, software that helps facilitate that. I'm building uh, enterprise level web applications that are going to help with that. So that's what I've been doing uh, for the last eight months or so, seven months. And what's going on now is, I think I, I think is it's taking us about that long to get to where we're at now. Um, so depending on what a tip, what does a typical day look like for you? Well, it actually really depends. Uh, where you are in your project, right? If you're at the very beginning stage of the project, you may have a day that is a little more communication based than your average day. And why that is, is you may still be gathering requirements from uh, from the client, from whoever that may be, from um, from saying, hey, uh, I wanna make sure that this is so, this is the idea. Are you going to need these features? If so, um, you know, this is how we think to implement it. Is this correct? And so you might have a, you might be sending emails back. You might be um, having phone calls, having a little bit more meetings than you normally would. And depending on what type of company you're at, uh, you'll, you know, if it's an agile environment. And if you're not familiar with agile, uh, it basically just means that your your development process. This is a real summed up version, by the way. So uh, a very summed up. But your development process can change on a dime more or less. And then there's um, waterfall, which is like, we did this, keep it moving, we ain't making any changes. That's like the two second uh, difference. Uh, but if you're an agile team, you'll have scrum in the morning where you're basically meeting up as on for, with all the developers in your team and discussing what you're working on and uh, if you need to, to pull anybody to help you with it and things like that, that'd be maybe the morning of your day. And again, if you're in the beginning cycle of your project, you may still be doing wireframes or user flow charts. Um, a lot of the entry level documentation that that goes along with starting a project. And this also depends on how big of a team you are. So in my team, I'm a team of about three to five because uh, we have part-time devs and we have interns, so that's why I say three to five. But we're, we have three full devs, myself included, um, that are working on this project on, on our specific module on my team and so uh, we're a small team by by most by most uh, accounts so we do everybody does a little bit of everything but if you're in a larger team if you're let's say you're on a 10 person team and you got you know three or four teams uh, with 10 people on it and you have a, a devs op, devops team or a devops section and you're on team A and you have your nine other members, there may be actually a single team member that's doing the um, the wireframes, a single team member that's uh, doing the graphic design, a, si a single, like, but on a smaller team, you're usually gonna be doing a lot of everything because even though um, later on in your career, you'll be a specialist, you'll know, like for me, I, I'm a full stack developer, I'm still doing technical documentation, I am doing um, I'm re requirement gathering, things like that, uh, wireframes. These are all things that on a larger team, maybe the UI UX guy would do or the uh, technical writer would do as well. So you're gonna be picking up these skills as well on a smaller team, which is why I encourage people when they're just getting started to work in-house as well. Uh, Cause typically as a remote de developer, you have a very specific task as well as the fact that it's gonna be harder to get a remote job. I think you're gonna learn a lot more being in-house. But yeah, so depending on what part of the process you're at, you will now uh, be doing the requirement gathering and the wireframes, and you'll be doing a lot of communication back and forth 
with um, the client to make sure that before we write a line of code, we know what where we're going and what we're doing and and uh, what we need to make, what we what we need to produce for the client. That's what we're that's what we're looking for here. Now let's say you're done with that phase of the project. You're gonna be coding. You're gonna be building out. And it depends on how how yeah what the it depends on what the development cycle is like. There's um, test driven development where you're actually just writing code to pass the tests that are gonna be used. But uh, we didn't do test driven development. We just developed right <laughs> right away. I don't know what the the opposite of test driven development is to just developing. Um, but in our case, we did we did a lot of the project setup. Um, I had a very minimal code base to get set up with. It was about, if I had to say, about 5,000 lines of code. Not not super minimal, but not an overwhelming amount because a lot of it's just same old, same old for the back end. But uh, we got started and we started from scratch. So it was basically zero lines of code after about a month and a half of me working there. So uh, the next sort of stage of development in your day, if let's say you're start, now starting the project. That's kind of like prep work. And you may go back and forth between the wireframes and the user flows charts and all that sort of stuff and the design um, during your next stages, but not as much. So you're actually coding it. You're going to be building the bulk of the application. And when you think you have the idea captured, you're going to have like a QA server or a, um, a way to show the client, QA being like a quality assurance server where you're going to upload it, you're going to have the client actually click through, go through it, hey, is this exactly what you wanted? Uh, all right, cool. At that point, they'll say yes or no. They'll probably throw a feature in there that's going to break your code base <laughs> while you're at it, and you'll have to design around it. Uh, it's at, No matter how detailed you get in your requirement process, the client will always, as the juices are turning, as because at the end of the day this is what they're passionate about it's their project they're hiring you to deliver a product that they can't make themselves and so when they don't usually and they usually don't have a technical background or they build it themselves so sometimes they'll think of additional things as you're working on it as they continue to think about it that you didn't factor into your code base and you'll add that in as well uh so you know depending on what stage you're at you do a lot of coding and uh with that coding when you get to sort of milestones in in your current stage you actually do a lot of testing as well and again th this everything i'm talking about you're saying wow man we're talking about like design um we're talking about architecture we're talking about wireframes uh user flow charts uh all this sort of stuff and coding the database the front end the back end that's a lot yes that's one of the benefits of being on a small team you get it you get exposed to a lot of things and when you're on larger teams, there may be a guy that only does the testing and a guy that only does the UI and UX. It all just depends. So uh, you may be doing testing. So in our, when we were about halfway through our project currently, we started implementing a lot of tests. We started implementing unit tests, which are essentially testing the functionality of your functions and code. So if I have a multiply by two function, um, it would then... If I pass in two, it would return four. If I pass in three, it would return six. And I'd write the I would write tests that would test to make sure that it's working as is expected. That would be a unit test. And then there's end-to-end -end testing. An example of this for Angular would be Protractor, um, where it actually will launch a mock version of your web application, and you'll have type in code saying what it should do and how it should react, and it will click through this mock version and go and test your code, and it will fail or it'll pass. And so uh, a lot of tests were written in the middle of our application and you maintain it as you go by, you check to make sure nothing breaks because as your, as your code base is developing, as new features are being added, as features are being, uh, functions are being updated and changed, shit breaks. It's just part of the process. Uh, that's why even though clients sometimes will want you to update the code in the middle of an, a uh, potential event, you should never do it uh, so because you never know the code base is so complicated that maybe your tests weren't written written perfectly and even though your tests were passing some some sort of limited use case came and crashed during whatever you know big event was going on even it, so um but so that's what the tests are for you'll do some testing now let's say you're getting towards the end of the application uh or at least the end to a major milestone where now it's time to move on to a different project. So you're gonna be uh, finishing up 
um, a lot of a lot of your application, a lot of the functions, some of the nice to have features, if there's time, that's when you start implementing those. Like, you know, I want this to actually float to the left and then be dragged around. I want a nice animation for this. Just sort of nice to have, but not really super. Uh, some of those feature requests that we couldn't build in that weren't absolutes, you know, I think I don't absolutely have to have this, but it's a nice to have. This might be the time you actually start doing some of that. Um, now, uh, so you're, you're basically wrapping it up, right? You're finishing things up, things that you may have put off uh, that you knew you could fix. A lot of the small stuff where like, hey, this doesn't look all that great. Let's go back and, you know, mess with the CSS a little bit, change that up. You start putting the finishing touches on it, if you will. And uh, this is another time where you're going to now start hammering in your own test. Not only do you have tests written that are passing and whatnot, and uh, front uh, front end, back end tests, all this sort of stuff, you're actually gonna be going through the application and you're like, I am bug hunting right now. There is a bounty out for bugs and I plan on collecting, you know what I mean? So the, that's that's really where I, I've been at for the last two or three weeks, where I am going through our entire module, our entire application, and I'm trying to find any bug I can and in whatever use cases there may be, right? And you have to get really creative. So, because uh, how if there is a way to break it, a user will find it. So don't ever think that, oh, a user would never do this. That's too random. I shouldn't waste the time to do it. No, waste the time and do it because I promise you they will find a way to break it. So you always have to think of all the use cases. And then what ends up happening is, or what I expect to end up, that's where we're at now, right? Or we're getting ready to move on to the next application, the next part of the process. And so what ends up happening now is you go and you go through the process again with some new application. And during this application, what's gonna happen is uh, the client's gonna be thinking about, oh, you know what? We've been using this for a while. We came, we got some feedback. We need you to make these changes. So then you jump back into the project and you, you wireframe it again, and you say, all right, these are the changes that you requested. This is how we perceive, look, is this how it seems in your mind? Uh, if it's not, well, this is why it has to be this way. You start working through it, start changing the database and the front end, and it's kind of like a, a, a non-endless cycle. But that's kind of, uh, I know this video is titled What I Do in a Day, but every day is different because it depends where you are in the project. That's why I gave this sort of long, 12 minute answer about what my day was. And I didn't really talk about each, about the day, but eight months. So that's that's what I do. And on a daily basis, it just depends what part of the project you're at, right? It's not a matter of making a simple web page anymore. It's a matter of building an entire web application that has a front end with various JavaScript frameworks, a back end with various databases and uh, middleware that connects them. And then it has about adding features, finding bugs, writing tests, designing it, all that sort of stuff. And I love it. And I think you guys will love it too. So that's what I do every day. As always, guys, uh, don't forget to support me on patreon.com slash codeentorials360. I'll see you guys in the next video. And uh, join our Facebook group, Code Tech and Caffeine. We hit over like 1,200. Pretty solid. We're going pretty quick, man. I appreciate you guys joining. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you're interested in coding bootcamp, check out devmountain.com where housing is included in your price of tuition. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.